Good morning. Today is June 16th, and we are on an, A Course in Miracles Lesson 167. And I will be channeling Mary Magdalene for us after we read the lesson. I'm just going live on Facebook, so welcome to everybody. My name is Reverend Lynn Laborde, and in 2019, no, 2020, 2020 Magdalene um, asked me if I would do a journey with her of a year of going through the Course in Miracles and channeling her so she could bring through the Divine Feminine if I would perspective. Do a journey with her of a year of going through the Course in Miracles and channeling her so she could bring through the Divine Feminine. If I Oops, just duplicated on Facebook. Um, so this is that journey and it's been remarkable. And I was just realizing yesterday that we're almost halfway through, which is pretty incredible. Um, the end of June <clears throat> will be half a year, 180 something days. So it's been, uh, it's been a beautiful journey having Magdalene's presence around all the time. Um, really understanding the Course in Miracles from this very heartfelt perspective. When the Course was written by Jesus along with um, Helen Schiffman and Bill Tethford, they were psychologists. So it was a very mental approach to the understanding of how to live the pathway, kind of the pathway of, the, of mastery, which is some other channeled writing that he has. So, I feel very um, blessed and humbled to be on this journey with her. And uh, I thank you for coming along. I thank you for watching. So let's get to the lesson. Let's see what we have today. Lesson 167. There is one life and that I share with God. There are not different kinds of life for life is like the truth. It does not have degrees. There is one condition in which all that God created share. Like all his thoughts, it has no opposite. There is no death because what God created shares his life. There is no death because an opposite to God does not exist. There is no death because the Father and the Son are one. You think that death is of the body, yet it is but an idea, irrelevant, to what is seen as physical. A thought is in the mind. It can then be applied as mind directs it, but its origin is where it must be changed. If change occurs, ideas leave not their source. The emphasis this course has placed on that idea is due to its centrality in our attempts to change your mind about yourself. It is the reason you can heal. It is the cause of healing. It is why you cannot die. Its truth established you as one with God. Death is the thought that you are separate from your creator. It is the belief conditions change. Emotions alternate because of causes you cannot control, you did not make, and you can never change. It is the fixed belief ideas. It is the fixed belief ideas can leave their source and take on qualities that source does not contain, becoming different from their own origin, apart from it in kind, as well as in distance, time and form. Death cannot come from life. Ideas remain united to their source. They can extend all that their source contains. In that they can go far beyond themselves, but they cannot give birth to what was never given them. As they are made, so will their making be. As they were born, so will they then give birth. And where they come from, they will return. The mind can think it sleeps, but that is all. It cannot change what is its waking state. It cannot make a body, nor abide within a body is alien to the mind does not exist because it has no source. 
for mind creates all things that are and cannot give them attributes it lacks, nor change its own eternal mindful state. It cannot make the physical, but what seems to die is but the sign of a mind asleep. The opposite of life can only be another form of life. As such, it can be reconciled with what created it because it is not opposite to truth. Its form may change. It may appear to be what it is not. Yet mind is mind, awake or sleeping. It is not, not its opposite in anything created, nor in what it seems to make when it believes it sleeps. God creates only mind awake. He does not sleep, and his creations cannot share what he gives not, nor make conditions which he does not share with them. The thought of death is opposite to the thoughts of life. Forever unopposed by opposites of any kind, the thoughts of God remain forever changeless, with the power to extend forever changelessly, but yet within themselves, for they are everywhere. What seems to be the opposite of life is merely sleeping. When the mind elects to be what it is not, and to assume an alien power, which it does not have, a foreign state it cannot enter, or a false condition not within its source, it merely seems to go to sleep for a while. It dreams of time, an interval in which there seems to happen what has never occurred. Changes wrought are substanceless, and all events are nowhere. When the mind awakes, it but continues as it always has. Let us today be children of the truth and not deny our holy heritage. Our life is not as we imagine it. Who changes life because he shuts his eyes or makes himself what he is not because he sleeps and sees and dreams an opposite to what he is? We will not ask for death in any form today nor will we let imagined opposites to life abide in an instant where the thought of life eternal has been set by God himself. His holy home we strive to keep today as he established it and wills it be forever and ever. He is Lord of what we think today and in his thoughts, which have no opposite, we understand there is one life and that we share that with him, with all of creation and with their thoughts as well, whom he has created in the unity of life that cannot separate death and leave the source of life where it came from. We share in one life because we have one source, a source from which perfection comes to us, remaining always in the holy minds which he created perfect. As we were, so are we now and will forever be. A sleeping mind must awaken as it sees its own perfection, mirroring the Lord of life so perfectly it fades into what is reflected there. And now it is no more a mere reflection. It becomes a thing reflected and the light with which makes reflection possible. No vision is needed now. The awakened mind is one that knows its source, itself and its holiness. Beautiful. Okay. Let me bring our beloved Magdalene through with our messages for us. Greetings, beloveds. There is indeed but one truth. There is indeed but one mind. There is indeed one state of reality that is that which God has created. In God's creation, in God's breath of life that has breathed this universal existence, there was a moment where the mind that was granted 
decided to take a nap. And in this moment of napping, beloveds, there was indeed some madness that ensued. There were beliefs in things like war and famine and greed and harm that could come to one. There was indeed a belief in a body that could perish. This indeed has been an illusion. It has indeed been a dream, beloveds. This has indeed been a state in which the mind slumbers. What you are being asked, beloved, is to awaken, to awaken to the truth of you, the truth that is the truth always. And that is the truth of one's divinity and of one's holiness. It is time for a sleeper to awaken. The awakening occurs in the surrendering of the will to the mind and the heart and the will of God. And it is a very, very simple act to undertake. You must understand, beloveds, that you have indeed been asleep and it is time to awaken. You must understand, beloveds, that everything that has been perceived to be harmful and painful has indeed been part of a dream. And when you will allow yourself to awaken to the reality that all of the instances and all of the existences that you have manufactured have indeed been part of this illusion. And you will wake, beloveds. You will reconcile all of these incarnations and you will allow them to come into one moment, one moment of conscious awareness, and you will come to see that indeed it has been a dream, it has been an illusion, and you will come back to the truth. That there is one life, and that indeed is the life that is shared with God. You will come to understand, beloveds, that only love is real. The love that you have for yourself, the love that God has for you. And you you love all circumstances. You love all beings. But most importantly, you love yourself. You come to the understanding, beloved ones, that the only possible answer to every single circumstance that you have is to add more love, to apply more love, to be more love, to be truly who and what you are as you were created by source. You are a being of divine countenance. You are a being of beauty and grace, of holiness and divinity. And you are being beckoned, beloved, to remember, to awaken from this dream, to know that you have merely been asleep and it is incumbent within you, beloved ones, to say, ah, yes, it is time for me to awaken. And the ways in which you interact with life is not in fear of death, for death does not exist, beloved ones. You are immortal beings. There has been an illusion of death. And it is time for you to come to this realization say, well, if this has been an illusion, how may I return to the reality of life, the reality of love and the reality of God? And it is merely through willingness, for this is the true meaning of free will, beloveds. If your will is to be one with the creator, if your will is to be one with all of life, then allow yourself to come to this remembrance and it is accomplished very simply. You surrender the ego, the mind that says that you are in pain, the mind that says that you are sad, the mind that says that life is not worth living, the mind that would have beings take their lives thinking that there would be respite from the madness. Understand, beloveds, the one thing that goes with you is not the physical form, it is the mind. So it is indeed the mind that we are looking to train, to heal, to rectify, to allow it to remember itself. 
where there was this idea of madness, the seed that was planted, which is taking root. So allow yourselves, beloved, not to drift into the madness, but to bring yourself and to think singularly within your minds that you will see and speak and live the truth and the truth only. And the truth is that you are as God created you, not the madness of the world. Death is an illusion. And what is real, beloved, is the very substance and the fabric of who you are. So allow yourselves today to live within that truth. Allow yourself today to know, beloved, that there is one life, and that life is the life that you share with God. And we will continue to have these conversations again and again. And there will be a moment of recognition for you in which you say, ah, yes, now I remember. And there is indeed a huge celebration. For as you remember, beloveds, you then remind other aspects of self to awaken to the truth that only love is real. Our blessings are upon you. Beloveds, when you need assistance and when you know that you have forgotten, call out to us and allow us to come and be with you to remind you we are only ever a thought and a breath away. Close your eyes to the madness of the world and allow yourself to come to the comfort of knowing that you are as God created you, divine, holy, and perfect. For that is the truth. Blessings to you, beloveds. We will speak with you again. I wish you all a beautiful day. Bye, everybody.